get to come in the video? Do I have to come and sit here next to me? That's a yes then. Come on, sit down. Good boy. That's perfect. You were born to be on the camera, Miles. Reviewing books that I read for my creative writing master's degree. I'm gonna put these down because they're very heavy. I've just worked out that I am eight months into my like English creative writing, specifically master's degree. And that's kind of blown my mind a little bit. But as a result of studying for that long, I have at this point accumulated this stack of books and a couple more which are kind of in progress that I've read as part of my master's degree. And I just thought it would be a really interesting video to sit down and review those books, just sharing my personal faith convictions. I am a Christian, my personal just taste in books and just giving you a few thoughts, basically. I have reviewed, I think, most of these books already on my channel, but you might or might not have noticed, probably not. I actually took down all of my monthly book wrap ups from 2023 because I rewatched a couple of them. Just to be completely honest with you guys, I felt like I lacked a lot of grace. Grace, is that the right word? I felt like I didn't lovingly talk about those books, the authors, people who read the books that I didn't like. So yeah, I'm just starting afresh filming this video, but I thought it would be good to have on my channel because like I said, Oh, I don't know if I have said this yet. I'm saying it now. These are some books that I wouldn't necessarily, and for some of them, would not pick up. As a Christian reader, just my personal tastes. So it's made for some very interesting, colourful reviews. Is that the right? Yeah, it's not black and white for the majority of these books. It's kind of grey in terms of what I liked and disliked, etc. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then keep watching. The first book that I read as part of my master's degree is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. This book is mega viral and I stand by the fact that it is one of the prettiest covers ever. I was actually researching the author and the majority of her books have really pretty covers. So I just want to appreciate that for a second. I mentioned this in a previous video, but my... <laughs> New Year's resolution for book review videos is to actually give you a review <laughs> because I tend to just launch or I have in the past launch into my thoughts without giving you any idea of the plot of a book which might be quite useful for you making the personal decision as to whether to read a book. This book tells the story of primarily Sam and Sadie, they're our kind of main two protagonists who are childhood friends and become friends in adulthood and they love video games and they start a video game design company. It's a literary fiction, if I'm not mistaken. It basically tells the story of them designing these video games, but alongside that, we've got the descriptions of their relationships and yeah, like the emotional side of things, which I did enjoy for the most part. As you can see from the post-it notes, we studied this book for our plot seminar. And one thing I loved about this book was the structure. Some books feel a bit misguided, a bit like they have a lack of direction. This book felt so structurally intentional. We have flashbacks between past and present. I just felt like she'd crafted this book, like she'd been so deliberate. And I enjoyed that as a reader. I felt like I was in confident writing hands, if that makes sense. Her actual writing style, I really enjoyed. It was the type of book that you open and you're just transported. So I was really enjoying this book for about 50%, maybe a bit more. Just really enjoying reading about the video game design. I don't know if Gabrielle Zevin is a gamer, but boy, there were so many video game references in her. But if she isn't a gamer, she did so much research. So big respect to her from that perspective. And yeah, I was really enjoying it. There were, like as a content warning, there are a couple of, um, sexual references but I concluded I was just reading rereading my Goodreads review that these references were actually necessary to the nature of the relationship they were describing it was from what I can remember quite a controlling um unhealthy relationship and I think that was how Zevin wanted it to be portrayed and so it's not glamorized it's kind of necessary to describe the reality of that relationship. And you know, a lot of literary fiction, if not all, I don't really know if that's the correct way to put it, but anyway, it's like realism. It's describing the society we live in. We got past 50% and I felt like she started glamorizing drug use. 
I said that on my review, I can't remember, because I read this way back in like September time, September, October time, the exact um, specifics of that, but I've written it in my review, so there you go. Also, we are introduced to like a new video game that Sam, one of the protagonists, creates. And in the video game, basically he legalizes same-sex marriage. I was really enjoying this story because it was just that a story. And then when she does this in the plot, I just felt like we transitioned from her writing a novel to her preaching and you know political ideologies a lot of the content started revolving around that but then something horrific happens as a result of sam's choice to do that in the video game and so i understood why she put it in because of what it led to in the plot so i did begin to kind of understand a little bit that was my honest opinion all of that being said I just would be very wary as a Christian because it's such an expertly crafted novel that I feel like the author's ideologies and political agendas, you might not notice it unless you're looking for it and it's quite hidden um, in some parts. So I would just be aware this is the case with a lot of modern books, especially literary fiction. A lot of them contrast to the Christian worldview, honestly, and the way that, you know, the commands God sets out, and obviously we'll all fail on God's commands, that's the gospel, Jesus had to die for us because we will fail, but when the opposite of God's commands are being glorified, that's where I kind of draw the line. So I ended up, I hope that made sense, I ended up giving this book two and a half stars, slap bang in the middle because there was so much I enjoyed from a creative writing perspective and I really did enjoy the first half of the book and then it lost me it lost me so we just went slap bang in the middle with 2.5 stars <laughs> the next book that I read as part of my master's degree was The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abby Dare I don't know if it's focusing and I don't know why it's not focusing I'm not going to go into too much detail here because I have spoken about this book countless times in my 2023 favorites video but the girl with the louding voice tells the story of is she 14 or 15 14 year old adunai who is a nigerian girl living in nigeria and she didn't get to finish her education the girl with the louding voice tells the story of her basically on a quest to finish her education and i gave this book five stars i absolutely loved it and I felt so honoured because, I don't know if that's the right phrase, because I don't want to be honoured, but like I felt honoured. Privilege, I'll say privilege. I felt privileged because we have a book club at my church and the ladies were kind enough to select this, my recommendation for the book club. And I hosted it at my, at my family house a couple of weeks ago and everyone loved it. So I was like, great, more people are reading this book. This is why I'm sharing it with you. I really believe more people should read this book. Um, the reason being it's a beautiful novel it's beautifully written we studied this for our voice seminar and the whole book is written in broken english to symbolize adonai not finishing her education but then on this quest to find her education the voice changes i'll just say that and it was just from a creative writing perspective absolute genius just amazing and you'd think a book like that would be hard to read a couple of the girls in my class said that they did find it hard to read, but I personally found like after a couple of pages, I was just immersed in this voice. Um, but yeah, aside from it being just a beautiful novel and story, and the second one's coming out in August, which I'm very excited, this book tackles real life issues, um, slavery, trafficking, forced marriage, abuse, all these horrific things. And I felt as a reader, as a reader living in the West in a very privileged position, um, and protected position like this book was so necessary and important to enlighten me to the experiences of people whose lives I literally can't imagine being in so it got five stars because as well I got to the acknowledgement Abby Dare the first thing she says is I thank God for this book and she has a faith which was amazing and helped me understand why kind of on a spiritual level I just felt at peace during this book I was in safe hands with someone who loves the Lord and sought to glorify him through this book. Um, religion is a common theme explored in this book. 
and specifically religion, the type of religion Jesus called out. I won't spoil it, but there's one bit. And I just vividly remember there was an image of Jesus and Adonai, the voice of Adonai, she writes, as I walked out, I looked at the picture of Jesus and saw that he was not smiling, just kind of to symbolize how Jesus is not happy when abusive, horrible things are done in the name of religion. And just religion in itself, like he called out the Pharisees so many times in the Bible. But yeah, as a Christian reader, as a human being, loved this book so much. The next book is A Song for Issy Bradley by Karis Bray. This book is written from multiple perspectives, which really helped my creative writing and inspired me. And it basically tells the story of a Mormon family who there are a bunch of siblings in the mum and the dad and the, I think, youngest sibling, I'll write it on the screen if I'm wrong, dies. And it's their collective, from different points of views, experience of dealing with that loss and dealing with their Mormon faith within that. I gave this book three stars because I didn't honestly think it was very good. I feel like I need to unpack that. Um, structurally, the multiple perspectives thing was good, um, but I just wasn't very captivated. I felt like the story dragged. I felt like, I, I, I thought it was a good exploration of loss, but I think it needed more to it to give it weight, if that makes sense. But I did find it useful because I've not read a book about the Mormon religion before, so it definitely educated me about what Mormons believe and kind of Mormon life and the author is an ex-Mormon so yeah. The next book, <laughs> The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver. This was actually additional reading. I was reading it in my last master's um, student vlog that I did and <laughs> this book is a very long book. It's a very long book. It tells the story of a missionary family in the Congo. A Christian missionary family but one thing I will just say about this book please bear in mind that the author is not a Christian at first I was like this is going to be so great I honestly thought it was like an autobiography of a Christian missionary family it's not an autobiography and it, it's a novel and the whole thing honestly just felt like a criticism of Christianity I enjoyed learning about the Congo because the author I was writing an essay about this today for uni she lived there briefly and she did her research so that all the cultural references were really interesting but as a christian i would not recommend this book um i wrote in my review like i just thought why have you made the missionaries if it's just going to be entirely negative towards missionaries but why make the missionaries if you just i just didn't get it i just didn't get it honestly but what i will say is as with a lot of books that i have read that have seemed to be like a criticism of Christianity, it's often a criticism of religion as opposed to the gospel. I didn't really see the gospel in this book and there is a big difference. So I gave this book 1.5 stars because the creative writing side of it, I can understand why it's so famous. Just the multiple perspectives, the language, the descriptions, but would not recommend. Next up, I need to go out in like minus two minutes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up. The next book I read is Mayflies by Andrew O'Hagan. This is also an extra book I read. It tells the story of a bunch of lads who have a night out in Manchester. And like that's like half of the book. And then the second half of the book is them as adults. And one of them has got a terminal illness. And it's basically them kind of dealing with grief, the changes in life. Um, I actually gave this book two stars because I felt like the second half redeemed the first half because it was like quite a deep, you know, exploration of humanity and it was dealing with grief and loss and stuff. But the first half was just drugs and sex and drunkenness. And for literally half the book, I was just reading about a bunch of lads having a night out and I was just like, this isn't good. <laughs> this just is not enjoyable to read about. A lot of curse words in this book. Um, content warning, curse words, swear words. Uh, yeah, it's one of those books that I've read and I probably won't remember I've read it. So there you go. Okay, second to last, we've got The Terrible by Ursa Daly Ward. So this is a memoir, pretty tricky to rate. This is the story of Ursa Daly Ward and all the things that happened, even the terrible things, and there were terrible things. It's about her childhood in the northwest of England with her beautiful, careworn mother and a little brother who sees things written in the stars. 
So I'm going to have to be careful showing you this. I said this before because there's a lot of swearing in it, but there you go. So the book is basically, the way I'd describe it, if you're interested in this type of thing, is a book of poetry, but it's an autobiography, if that makes sense. So I found it really interesting from that perspective. I actually took snippets of her structural techniques um, and the poetry, the structure of it to, write, to use in my own work. In terms of the content, I honestly feel a lot of this book was just reading about her. I was just reading about um, her sex life and I didn't want to, to be honest. And just to be completely blunt, I really empathise with the tough life experiences she went through. Like, obviously, life is tough, but I didn't really see the point in the book. I came away and I thought, what am I supposed to have taken from that? as opposed to the funky structure. I'm just editing the video and I just want to add a couple of things about this book. Firstly, Ursa Daily Wood writes about becoming an escort because of financial difficulty. I just wanted to not appear insensitive about the fact that she was going through financial difficulty. Like, of course, I mentioned in the video how I empathise with her because she did go through some really hard life experiences. Secondly, this book also has themes of Christianity within it. And I say Christianity because it's another example of religion, but from my perspective, a severe absence of the gospel. And also looking back through this video and the books I've read from my masters, it's so bizarre, but also crazy. There's a lot to unpack here with how many of these texts include elements and themes of Christianity and religion. Um, but the majority, if not all, apart from I'd say the girl with a louding voice, are religion like works based and authors you know maybe rejecting christianity there it is again which isn't the gospel at all it's like a works based you have to be perfect and that's not the gospel jesus died because we fail jesus died because we're not perfect and that just shows his love for us and i just wish i could sit down with these authors and be like that's not the christian message like let me tell you the gospel finally we've got original sins by matt roland hill um, I've spoken about this book briefly before on my channel, but I'm kind of glad I deleted that video because I've had time to process it. Basically, this book is a memoir, and the way I'd summarise it is it shows the danger of being raised in a religious but not necessarily gospel preaching environment, one that emphasises the works of the law without God's grace. Matt Roland Hill, from my perspective, thought he had to be perfect and so rejected Christianity. Um, that was kind of how I viewed it. It was a deeply upsetting and disturbing book to read as a Christian. For that reason, I wouldn't recommend it. But if you do want to read about people who um, have been raised in religion as opposed to the gospel and how it has led to um, them rejecting God altogether, um, it also tells the story of his drug addiction. I appreciated his transparency. It really took me into the world and made me feel dark and just I just it was horrific in parts but he is an excellent writer I will say that right I need to go out because I am due somewhere in six minutes thank you so much for watching hope that was helpful see you soon goodbye and god bless